Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm here with the all new Cura 5.5. I was somewhat surprised to see the 5.5 update show up during my daily workflow and excited to see what's new. I'm always happy to see Cura keeping up with the Joneses, implementing features popular in other slicers while also providing their own regularly advancing innovations. 5.5 shows up with some very interesting new updates. One of them is a new feature that fixes a frustrating issue I've had with Cura for a long time, and I'm very excited that they have given it to me. In addition to that one fancy feature, they've added some other powerful new features and some important fixes. Let's check them out. When opening Cura for the first time, or when going to help what's new, you will be greeted with this splash screen. The first one talks about updates to the Ultimaker S-Series printers. If you have one of those, this might interest you. If you don't, you can move along. I will move along. The very first thing they talk about is something that's actually quite important and quite powerful. Previously, plugins for Cura only allowed very basic cosmetic-like changes to Cura. However, they have now allowed plugins access to the slicing interface. This allows plugins to physically make changes to the Cura slicing process. Cura claims this will bring advanced new features from the community via plugins, such as finally manual support painting and other helpful slicing processes. The brilliant 3D printing community will most definitely be creating using this new plugin ability. Cura says, watch out for more engine plugins popping up in the marketplace, and I will most certainly be doing that. Moving along, the most exciting new feature to me, properly arranging multiple copies of STL files. In the past, when you multiplied a model, it would place them in random orientations. This was hugely annoying, and you'd have to go to each one and manually correct them so they face the same orientation, giving them the same Z offset, layer line orientations, and things like that. This made absolutely no sense, especially for a slicer that has gone through countless updates and iterations and has become quite advanced over many years of software engineering. However, someone somewhere woke up and finally realized this needs to be addressed, and they did so. You can now clone your models and properly orientate them to match the original cloned model. You can even have it apply changes such as rescaling to all of the cloned models at the same time. This one is interesting. They now have new profiles. These new profiles are aimed to help you set up a profile more quickly in order to adapt to your printing goals. For example, the engineering profile says it's designed to print functional prototypes and end user parts with the intent of better accuracy and closer tolerances. The draft setting is said to be designed to print initial prototypes and concepts for validation with the intent of significant print time reduction. So basically, you can print crappy versions of a test print, or when you feel like things are moving along better, you could switch to a higher quality profile to start working towards your final product. We have their full release notes. It's super long, but let's go over a couple of very interesting things mentioned in here. The first thing they mention, rightfully so, is the new engine plugins. Notice that they claim the plugins can now hook into and change actual slice processes. This means plugins can now generate infill patterns, modify G code, modify extrusion paths. Things like this are going to open the door to some powerful new plugins made by super genius nerds across the world for sure, and I can't wait to see what they are. The next one talks about some new settings. They've added quite a few new settings related to top surfaces and walls. I'm sure a lot of you would like to play with those. Moving down, we have updates on supported operating systems. This is a big one for Mac users. They have introduced Mac OS X builds for ARM64 GPUs. For those of you using Linux, they have removed the need to have multiple builds by creating a single Linux build. Next up, some changes meant just for Ultimaker printers. And here we go with some quality of life improvements. This is a fun one also related to the new model orientating and duplicating process. You can now use Control-C and Control-V to copy and paste your model. 
This is something those of you working in computers are very used to and comfortable doing to copy and paste text. Now you can copy and paste models the same way. This will also allow you to arrange those models in the orientation of the original copied model and also allow you to make modifications to that original copied model that duplicate itself to the new clones. These are highly useful real world updates that will be helpful in day to day use of Cura and I'm super excited for them. There's a few other interesting things showing up here in the bug fixes. Sometimes people will say, oh, I'm having problems with this model or that model or printing this method or that method. But hey, it's better in Orca Slicer. Hey, it's better in Prusa Slicer. And their solution is use Prusa Slicer. It's better. Use Orca Slicer. It's better. But what's really the case is sometimes there is just a bug causing an issue with the particular model or slicing method being implemented in that model. One of the things Cura has been very good about is actively hunting down and squashing these bugs. Of course, sometimes these new versions implement new bugs, but two steps forward, one step back is fairly common, unfortunately, in the electronics world. For example, look at the very first line in this bug fix. The first support layer were printed incorrectly if adhesion was set to none. In other words, if you're not using a skirt, brim, or raft, your support layers may have been printing incorrectly. So no matter how good Cura is and how well you sliced your model, your entire print could fail due to this bug. Something like this could cause you to leave Cura and move on to another slicer, when all along, all you had to do was add a skirt or a brim, or of course, Cura just had to fix that bug, which apparently they have. Here's another one. The support was printed before the brim when the origin was at the center of the build plate. Yikes, that's a weird one. Here's another one talking about improvements in the Z seam position when specifying sharpest corner seam alignment. I'm actually super excited about this because I do find Cura already does a better job with helping manually position your Z seam than other slicers that I commonly work with. Choosing sharpest corner is something I seldom do, and I'm interested to see how they've improved that. Printers with a high resolution would incorrectly print embossed features. Gee, the flow would unexpectedly increase after a bridge was completed. Bridging settings would not be applied to the first skin layer if the infill density was set to zero. The brim would be too small if the extruder was not defined. Initial build plate and printing temperature would not be applied correctly when printing one at a time. As you can see, some of these bugs are rather significant and could literally lead to print failure, causing people to blame Cura as a whole rather than a specific feature in their slicing strategy initiating one of these bugs. Here they talk about specific bugs resolved since their beta of 5.5. There's quite a few. And then there are other bug fixes. Here we have some lesser important bug fixes. I find some of them interesting, such as this one. Fixed a crash that would be caused when rotating a model only a little. In other words, if you just made a slight rotation, the app could crash. So they fixed it. Thanks, Kara. Another update for macOS users, Elgu, Stratiao, Uni, and Zav printers are once again supported. Ender 5 S1 now has a profile. Boron Trident 250, 300, and 350 have profiles that now include new nozzle options. Apparently there's an Ender 3 start code fix that can prevent bed scratching. Gee, thanks. And apparently there's a small fix to the homing behavior of the Ender 3 S1. The entire Ender 3 lineup and the Ender 3 S1 have a large install base. So it is nice to see some updates targeting them specifically. There we have it. Those are the key updates, features, and bug fixes in Ultimaker Cura 5.5. There might be some other updates in that gigantic log that are more interesting to you than they are to me. However, those are what stood out to me. I am looking forward to getting started with 5.5. You can too, as it's available right now. The good thing about Cura is you may install 5.5 while also keeping 5.4 installed so that you can go back and forth in the event you do in fact run into new issues. If you do go ahead and try slicing with 5.5, I'd love to hear your experience in the comments. You're on the Greg Adventure YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3drundown.com. 
and having a peek at Ultimate Akira's new 5.5 version update was today's adventure. Hey.